Hey, everybody. Welcome to Star Trek Resignation, a Discovery Home Companion. Are we still doing this? <laughs> yes, we're still doing <laughs> this. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah. Surprise, it's me. It's Wade Bowen. And with me, as has been the case, is Glenn Hall. Yes, I am still here. It's not new. And... Yeah, and surprisingly enough, uh, Sean Parada. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. Uh, I am uh, the guardian of forever, or whatever. <laughs> oh, wow, Sean, I never thought I'd hear yeah, you yeah, yeah. Uh, quote uh, the guardian of forever. Well, I watched this shit twice, so yeah, I yeah. now I know pain. Now I know the words, the guardian of, of forever. forever. Well, well, we'll dive more into this later, but now you know why I would have been delighted if that character had actually been played by Paul F. Tompkins. Yeah, that would have been because great. Because that would have made him a, uh, a quite the big matzo ball in the continuity of Trek. I mean, I don't care about uh, that. I would have just liked to hear him shout, I am the Guardian of Forever. Guardian of Forever. I mean, that, 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 that was not Carl's voice saying the Guardian of Forever. Yes. Like no, I just shut up. Get into the oh, episode. Oh. Yeah, Paul F. Tompkins is a, so a bird alien, and he will always be that in the cartoon. Oh, Damn right. Uh, that reminds right. me. Sorry. The, the, no, this is not, sorry. It's not relevant to the episode. But <laughs> I'm in hell. Oh, <laughs> shut up. Overdramatic shitbird. But, there you uh, go. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's right. A... Fuck you. Um, <laughs> all right, no, turn it really. around. I, no, no, no. It's we're fine. getting somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah keep sure, up. Sure. Keep. This is all we've always wanted. <laughs> <laughs> Yell at him some more. Yell at him some more, Glenn. Okay, no, no. Tell definitely. him what a piece of yeah, shit he is. Let's say definitely not now. Um, so, but I wanted Do to it. talk about. <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to talk about briefly, uh, in, in Glenn adjusted terms, is I was watching um, Guardians of the Galaxy this past week. Uh, the, the the both of them um, and. I had forgotten that in Guardians 2, Michelle Yeoh shows up at, at the end as one of the uh, original comics Guardians. She has, uh, her and Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, and, uh, right, oh, She's right. on his team. That's yeah, funny. she's part of like the, yeah, the team at the end uh, that reunites. But uh, so she has literally two lines, and she is a space pirate in the context of the movie. And I was just like, holy shit. <laughs> they made better use of Michelle Yeoh. When she literally had two lines of the in the post credit, or I guess very end of this movie, and part of it was like her costume and makeup were really cool. Like she looked like a badass space pirate, and they could. She looks like a badass space pirate in Trek. I would argue. I, mean, I, li- I like her costume in in the Terra Firma. Oh, well, yeah, the, the, the Terra Firma like, Wild Mirror Universe costume, like her. Her Tell you what, guys, this isn't really related, but I was watching Guardians of Gahul, and oh, did you know <laughs> that's the owl one? Yeah, there's an echidna in it, maybe. I don't know. Oh, is there? I, that's fun. That I, I, I have. Directed? Yeah, that's it. Sorry, that was just a non sequitur. I didn't watch that shit. It, Zack Snyder okay. dir- directed it. No, I, I might if there's an echidna in it, but uh, that's a whole other thing that people might not know about me. Glenn, how many uh, times have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy? Uh. I mean, at least a couple times each. There's just there's so many movies, Glenn. Well, did I, I, yeah, I, I, I watched I stuff. I've I mean, I watched the first one a couple times in the theater. I was very excited by that's it. That's different. But, hey, Seeing things multiple times in the theater is like that's an experience. Right? Well, <laughs> watch right. a, watch like, another I, movie. Can we get back to Terra Firma and Solid Ground? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was just saying that even though I had no complaints really about like Michelle Yeoh's costume and stuff on the show I seeing her in this context is like this really distinctive space pirate I'm like oh they, there's more they could have done there's more they could have done to make better use of Michelle Yeoh because again Michelle Yeoh did great work with literally two lines yeah she's the coolest she's good yeah like I hate the way what they did like I hate the mirror universe I hate that she's a space Hitler uh, I hate that, you know, they're like, you're, you're a space Hitler, but we love you because you're f- for whatever reason. I don't know why right. they don't, like, hold up that you're, I guess it, you didn't genocide billions of people in our universe, so I guess it's okay. Uh, like, right, the I, mere I hate people. most every, but you know what? I love, Mich- like, Michelle Yeoh makes it entertaining. She's entertaining to watch. She's Even great. It, None of it's her fault. 
No, right. no, of course not. I, I, I guess really what I was just saying is like the, the, the design aesthetic of the show we get it. could have further we, served. We know what you were saying. She's underserved. You're 100% right. Yeah, yes, Thanks. yes. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, absolutely. And one, other, so, and one other thing related to that, because this kind of... Wade hasn't even introduced the show. <laughs> All right, fine. Never mind. He hasn't even said our names. You are a voice... Uh, he, he said, oh, he, he said did. He did. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. At, Shut the fuck That's up. all I did. If you're not going to be right, shut the fuck up. No. I'm always yeah. wrong and I'm always loud. Yeah. yeah. Ain't that the fucking truth? Hey, we're not here to plug your podcast, Folsom City just Prison Folsom Tunes. Folsom City Tunes. <laughs> That's Folsom a different City That's Blues. A Folsom, Folsom City tunes. Limits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Actually, that's that's what uh, Austin Austin City. Uh, I know that's that's the right. Yes, I know. I'm saying. I'm wondering if what the what the pod pun for that could have been. Anyway, yeah, never mind. So hey, uh, what happened in this episode? Who wants to do? Did you watched it tonight, Sean? Uh, yeah. Let Glenn do it. I don't want to do right. it. I'll, I'll do it. Get such joy I, out of it. I I don't anymore. You've taken that from me. So congratulations. But I'll do it anyway. Uh, so yeah, terra, terra Firma Part 2, uh, majority of it is the continuing of the sliding door scenario with uh, uh, Giorgio. She uh, you know, uh, puts Michael in the uh, torture thing until she relents and comes, quote-unquote, back into the fold, sends Michael to kill all of her co-conspirators, and fast forward, shocker, uh, Mirror Michael is still so bad. She's so bad, and of course yeah. turns on... Uh, Giorgio, uh, once again, Giorgio sees this coming and has uh, uh, Mirror uh, Saru and his fellow uh, elevated uh, Vaharaid Kelpians uh, save her. And then she and Mirror Michael end up stabbing each other to death. She wakes up after dying. And as we have alluded to, Carl uh, reveals himself as the Guardian of Forever. Uh, from the TOS episode City on the Edge of Forever and an animated series episode that I cannot remember the title of. And then, uh, again, as Wade alluded to, the she is sent to uh, parts unknown for her own TV show uh, where she'll be closer, where in the Prime universe, where she'll be closer to the Mirror universe so she won't be, like, flying apart. And then the crew of the Discovery does an agonizing toast a rat, like a uh, to space Hitler. The worst to kind sp- of thing this show does. Just the yes. worst. This show is at its worst when it's doing exactly that. Yep. They do it so off. They do it all the fucking time. Yeah, it's, it's bad. They want it like I, I'm trying to think of an example where something like this was earned, and I'm sure there are many examples, but like. It's so just overwhelmingly. On this show? No, 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 no. I, I mean, oh, like, no, just, just in general. Sure. Yeah, just in general. Like the the going around and oh well, she did this and this and this. And I, for some reason, I can only think of bad examples of it. Like Agents of Shield, I, which I've compared to Discovery many times, had a scene very similar to this. It wasn't toasting Space Hitler. It was just toasting a. Uh, a character that died that I can't remember a fucking thing about, but you know, it was the same force. Like, oh, they were so great off screen, and the things we. Right. I think they did it when, when Adrian Palicki and her English beau. Oh, Mockingbird got, yes. left the Mockingbird sh- when they left the show. Cool. I think they. Yeah. Did. I thought it was fine in that. I mean, uh, that, that's not the one. I was, they, they did it for another character. I think. Whatever they, whatever they revealed. It doesn't matter. It's always yeah, very contrived. That's yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a hard thing. Writing it is physically impossible. There's no way to yeah. write one of those because it's the most unnatural thing to do. Yeah, exactly. It feels contrived. It feels forced. Because when people are like forced to go around at Thanksgiving and say what you're thankful for, you're miserable. You're yeah. miserable in yeah. that moment. No one's ever happy. <laughs> but then in these, people are always so happy to go around in a circle to share. And it's like, no, no. Yeah. Her piercing barbs were glorious. Like, are you talking about her dick? Or I don't right, know. Right, yeah, really. It's like, <laughs> she killed billions, but, you know, it was somewhere else, so it's all right. Well, don't worry. She, she was got, our she asshole. She got sent back in time uh, to test her worthiness, and she did so by saving a one, uh, one Kelpian. Yep. So, uh, great. And she yeah. tried to save another so uh yay yay she's worthy she didn't go back and stop herself from being space hitler she saved a kelpian Woo! right Woo-hoo-hoo! i mean i'll give it 
I'll give them credit. Like She's I harped on this She's last episode bad. so much about like, oh, they're just like that. They need to make her go through. They did a lot of work to say no. She's trying to be different in this episode. Yeah. It's still annoying. It's they did. Still, well, they, and, and that work shows that. Yeah. That you can you can see the seams, baby. Yeah, because Carl is like, well, and she's like, I will, but I didn't save my daughter. I was like, well, you tried. And so, I mean. You should have just I, said, well, she sucked. She didn't need to be saved. Right. Like, you can make the argument that the whole thing wasn't to have her fixed being a space, right. but just to change her character she's changing as a person the character's growing oh right. that's what well, you yeah. want so fine but well, but yeah but I, I, but also it's like yeah okay so it was never about saving michael which is good because michael sucks like there's nothing redeemable about mirror michael None. there never was so why do we care that right other than she's my daughter and and part of it is also just I, I, this is a smaller part granted but like just the unclear stakes of like is, I mean, and I, I think they did make a good choice of having her just accept whatever this is, it's real, I can change something. But I think as the viewer, it's still, I mean, look, we have all seen enough, you know, alternate reality, simulation, blah, 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 it, on Trek alone, you know, to, to know that the stakes here are not necessarily super high. Like, even, you know, when you see Georgia the get sti- stabbed. The stakes are her life. No, no, no. Yeah, they are. They're high well, for her. For the I character, think I, yeah, I think I'm not understanding your point. Like, whether or not she went back in time or not. Like, they do yeah. say, like, well, two years or, you know, three months or however long she actually did pass. So they're like, oh, I yeah, guess she, she did go back. It's it's like in Contact um, when she goes through the thing and they think it's instant. It's actually exactly like Contact where they... They check. Yeah, it's like right fucking there. Narnia. It's like so many things. You go through a portal. You go to this other. But it's literally they like they, she goes through the the machine in contact, and they see it as instantaneous. But then they uh, check her radio log, and it's like thirty hours of static. So right. it's like th- that same corroboration of like, oh, you actually were somewhere for a period of time. But right. anyway, th- th- this is another thing that kind of d- doesn't. It's it's in the what? How, how would I fix it? but it doesn't quite apply to this episode specifically. I, so much of the issue, and I think, Wade, you, you talked about this last week, is that she is quite literally a space Hitler, and that's just not super-duper redeemable any... That's not cool, yeah. It's not cool. Uh, it's not... It's not. That's a, not cool, man. It's, <laughs> yeah, what? Putting it extremely Shit, bro, lightly. stop being a space Hitler. Bro. But, but that's kind of how the show treats it. That's kind of my point. And it's it's also just bizarre, you know. Giorgio, like Prime Giorgio, was not like I don't. She wasn't. A, she was a captain. She wasn't an admiral. She wasn't like a, you know someone high up in the authority of Earth. Like it was. It I, I always thought it was strange that this essentially random captain in the mirror universe is literally the emperor of a you know galaxy spanning uh, 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 empire. Yeah, it's and just the butterfly effect, baby. No, no, sure, sure, yeah. sure. No, I mean, look. like, you go back to... It, it's a callback, all, uh, kind of, to Inter- Enterprise, where the translator, Sato, was emperor of the mirror universe. Spoiler. Of the t- and she was just, like, a nobody. She was she w- she was a translator. She wasn't anybody. But on that show, because you, your cast is the center of the galaxy. And Spock galaxy. literally changes the galaxy, you know, after, you know, having one interaction with Kirk. Like, so, like, it's, right. it's not something that they, that would have been impossible to square away. But since we have three seasons of, of this shit to, to, you know, look back on now, I think it would have been much more effective if jo- Mirror Giorgio had been a captain. Essentially, a space pirate, much to my earlier point. Like, you know, still has done bad things, but, you know, maybe a little more redeemable in the eye of the viewer. Like, maybe she's more of a... I can't believe I am I keep referencing fucking Dragon Ball Z. Um, but yeah. less... She's a piccolo, right? <laughs> yeah, more, more... Less of a cheetah, more a piccolo. Exactly. Um, uh, <laughs> okay. Okay. But uh, so I, I don't know that it's, again. It doesn't apply to this episode specifically, but th- I think that is something that they maybe could have altered uh, to to have yeah. give us badass Michelle Yeoh without the baggage of her being a genocidal maniac. 
that's what I hate about the the mirror universe. Anyway, it's all one note. Yeah, like, and there's no nuance to it at all. Like, None so whatsoever. D- Deep Space Nine kind of plays with no, it, but it, it falls They're back on it falls back on Kira being evil and volcanic. She's a little more interesting, and but yeah, yeah, it's all it's all the same. Yeah, Sean Sean would love. Deep Space Nine uh, mirror universe because it's so horny. It's it is. Good. Yeah, that's I'm into that. Get, like one of the main characters is just like always like has just finished uh, fucking someone or is about to fuck someone. Like it is one note doesn't even begin to describe it. Yeah. Sold. But it's kind of it falls back on the evil bisexual trope. Yeah, exactly. I it's, mean that's a big problem with a lot. That so does this mirror universe to an extent, but. Uh, yeah, especially in Deep Space Nine, that's the, that's the big complaint about it by a lot of the the SJWs on Twitter nowadays. But right. it's nah. fine. They're right. Um, it's problematic. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well, so I mean, but I'm trying to think of like other specific events in the episode to to kind of unpack. Well, I mean. The main thing we get back to there's there's little motifs we've had like the noises fucking. Uh, Michael Burnham makes man. She's making full <laughs> animal noises. That, that Terran instinct or whatever. She's just like it's a wild animal, man. It's like, right. it's like all right. And she's just like slobbering. Credit to Sonequa Martin Green. She does nothing halfway. Like I, can, you can. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's. She's phoned it in. I mean, that's that's. Look, I'm. She's fine, but also I don't know. We're like, on, my we're shit. On, my shit. We know my we shitty have, idea, like evidence. you know, Wade my shitty Michael education of a, as a as a performer was like, don't stretch out to a ten. You got to pull it back so you have somewhere to go. Right. And she has nowhere to go because she's. I mean, she's giving it. Yeah, which is in the mirror universe. I don't think she needs anywhere to go. But that's because she's playing like a one note. You know. Yeah. Which basically is basically a ravenous beast in the, in the right. in the prime. You know, as her prime character, she uh, could certainly d- do with a little bit of restraint. Yeah. Right. There's just a lot of things in this episode that just 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 struck me wrong. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> I, I just I wish like any of it was at all different than exactly what I expected. Right. So, I mean, why is it the orison of every parent that you only learn from God. pain? Yeah. It's like, well, like, I don't know. Speaking as a parent, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't no. think, I, I don't think that is a <laughs> How come my kid only learns when I smack him around? That didn't ring true to you? <laughs> that did not ring Thank true. No. Didn't. Good Lord. Yeah. Like, I don't know, why like not learn from not what learning. I say? I remember things I learned from what I was told, you know, a little yep. less, like, not... And, you know, if, if she had tied this into Into the Woods lyrics, I would have, all would have been forgiven, uh, you know, quoting what's the song, Ch- Children to Listen. Yeah, I don't know Into you're, the Woods, you're, but Yeah, hey. you're, you're well, you've blown by me. But it sounds great. I like Sondheim just fine, so it's, I'm it's, sure. It's a, it is a... I'm a big uh, James Corden fan. It's a so. non-violent... Well, it's get a, off this pot. <laughs> <laughs> a good yeah. guy, I'm not. <laughs> that, movie, that movie's a fucking travesty. Uh, oh, is he uh, in that uh, one, too? Yeah. Okay. That's that's what I... Yes, that's what I'm... Um, I saw uh, Into the Woods at Shakespeare in the Park with uh, Amy Adams and uh, oh, I, uh, Glenn Close. Talking about Star Trek. Yeah, yeah, I know. Right, were, they, were, were they in Star Trek? Nope. Okay, get out. No, uh, <laughs> I can see Glenn. I can see Glenn Close as uh, an admiral. I, I actually, if, I, could if, see I was about to say, too. if you told me she, she's in Guardians of the Galaxy Part One, but that's not, again, we're not talking about that. <laughs> I know, I know, Different space stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's you're not talking Star Wars, so the, we won't get so mad like uh, Trek people should. But no, or really. do no, whatever. I'm kidding. Who cares? <laughs> no, none of that's here. <sighs> she is Nova Prime of the Nova Corps, which is, you know, a similar uh, organization. Shut the I'm, fuck up! I'm done, I'm done. Fucking relax. Don't have a fucking hernia. <laughs> I'll have whatever I goddamn want. Yeah. Uh, hey, we'll have fun with a that. hernia? An ice cream cone? I could have it <laughs> yeah. all. I guess it would help. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, I, I, the being mean is not a good look on me. Uh, so That is. Keep doing it. Do no, it. we like it. It's good. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll try it again later. We'll see. I mean, other stuff like I mean, the the whole thing of like Saru becoming like her her worm tongue, uh, basically uh, not worm tongue, uh, the, 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 whatever henchman. Sure. Her her whisperer. 
Her Varys. That's yeah. what I was thinking. Of. Varys from Game of Thrones. That's that's kind of like the the archetype yeah. they were kind of shoehorning him into. Where like I like how not- quickly they were like able to gloss over. She explains the Varharai, and then he's oh, like, yeah. he's like, oh my my wife and daughter. She's like, yeah, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Survive for them. <laughs> right? He's like, he's like, oh yeah, okay, you're right. She was so cool, <laughs> so quick. To right. be like, no, I knew no, a no, Kelpian once. <laughs> I knew a Kelpian once. His name was Saru, and like, yep. well, good thing that's not my name. Like everybody <laughs> else, who has the same name in the Mary universe. Like, yep. He was captain of a starship and uh, teach others teach others what you know is how you avenge them it's all against very my empire that <laughs> that ate all of your friends. Yeah. Avenge them by don't worry about me. I'm the one that did all this shit to right. you. But I am directly by, I am directly responsible for the suffering of your people. Yeah, talk talk about a misdirection. <laughs> Seriously. It's it's literally the, the the I think you should leave hot dog sketch. We're all trying to find yeah, the guy yeah, who did this. Yeah. <laughs> right. As she wears like right, her giant like headpiece. It's yeah. like no that, no, like we we know who did it. <laughs> that, that costume yeah. is cool. I, I totally agree with that, by the way. It's perfect. It's exactly what, you know, it, it's supposed to be. Um, the Terran Empire is apparently very gaudy. Oh, well, I yeah. mean that that I mean it, it's it has its roots in the nineteen sixties, so ooh, yeah. <laughs> shocker. The um, tracks, right? It's there in the in the TOS mirror universe. They, it's kind of more. Uh, They're like vests. togas and shit. Yeah, like togas and, and vests and, and like sashes. It's very piratey, mm. um, and uh, I, which is funny because that is set after the events you see here. Right. right. Um, well, everything's. This is. Right. I mean that that it's goes all, back all to discovery and, and total. Like it's. It's wildly different design wise and TOS before and yeah yeah that's that a, that's a a, that's a different conversation entirely yeah I mean the really, fact that the yeah. Carl and the Guardians have forever oh yeah uh, in the TOS there's no it's just the doorway but the Guardians of forever I guess as people are in the cartoon is that right Glenn uh I so if I, it's been a while since I've watched it but like well, they, they use it to time travel back to Vulcan to save Spock. well they use it the, yeah but they don't have people like the, the actual guardians guardian people. that goes back to the original screenplay by uh I have a mouth and I must scream that guy uh Harlan Ellison wrote oh, the, oh okay gotcha Harlan Ellison wrote the screenplay to the guardians forever and the original screenplay there were actual guardians that weren't just the portal oh yeah oh and yes yes there there are uh bird people that's i this that just i can't remember if they were supposed to be the guardians or like worked with the guardians. oh is that in the cartoon that's in the cartoon I don't know. yeah, like, yeah. They're, they're like they're like kind of i don't they're think bird they're bird people. people in the screenplay I, they, maybe they were but like they republished the screenplay harlan ellison has published his screenplay as it was before it got changed and stuff so i think they're kind of drawing on that they're kind of throwing a bone to that by having right. Carl show up and turn into things. So in, in the past, the Guardians were just the rocks? They were just like that actual that portal? That portal is just that portal is it like is what... So, they're, so they've yeah. never had like a personified form? No. Uh, okay. which I, I need to, I need to uh, look up the, the, the animated series episode because th- there's some involvement of like these bird... Uh, these like super tall bird people. Sure. I can't remember if they were like I don't. I didn't movie. watch the cartoon, so I don't know. I just know that the original, the Harlan Ellison original screenplay that they right. then they got cut out. It's so possible. I think they're throwing a bone. It's basically yeah. So it's it's they're they're not traditionally the Guardian of Forever is just that portal. Uh, but now they yep. have, you have this whole thing of like ah oh, the Temporal Wars you know fucked everything up and so I went into hiding. Which that was a nice bit of I didn't mind that like that kind of background to like why he's hidden on this planet. I didn't mind that. I'm just always I I think just like the sphere data is the sphere data to part me. was like the yeah they they say something like. Oh, uh, is it like only your your you know? Yeah, your only the, only the sphere, sphere data, data. But the way they explain the sphere data is like they don't have to do a lot of work there. But the way they explained it was annoying. Yeah, it's well, it's just again, it's all stuff to make the discovery the most specialist you know thing right. ever. Right. Well, anyway, how the fuck would we fix this shit? This I don't know. I don't know how to. F- I don't. Oh, I do. I do. Just want to real quick. The 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 guy. I like the guy. The not Lorca guy they're like okay so like we know we don't have like we don't have that actor we don't oh, yeah, have yeah. Lorca instead we have a guy 
<laughs> and he looks just some dude. He really just he just looks like when they pull him in, he looks like they just pulled in like a crew member, like from the the production. Like right. The right. show's production, they just like grabbed a guy like hanging a light and went put on the like this these overalls or whatever and get it behind this wall and when she shoots you fall down and he was like ah uh, sure yeah yeah like we still got more to do before we get to how fix it because i got like the lorca there the, while they're in the mirror universe georgia was like oh they're she's going through all this trouble to, like send michael to find lorca we gotta find if we can find lorca we could shut this down where is lorca she knows where the fuck lorca is he's in the prime universe like he fucked off to the prime. She's been in the prime universe. She's heard the backstory. Oh, and she knows where he is. Right. So that was annoying to me because they're, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that's where Lorca was. That's funny. Yeah, I failed her. I failed my daughter. I was like, your daughter sucked. She's so uh, annoying. Yeah. I just think the way that you, you you fix this is instead of. Well, like we still have like we still have to talk about the non mirror stuff there, right? I mean, the non mirror stuff was just like the toast at the end and her leaving to go on her own show. And, uh... You know, no, no, no. We got, they got back on the ship and the Admiral was like, Hey, Saru. Hey, Saru. I'm gonna undermine you, Saru. Hey, <laughs> right. say, hey, Mr. Saru. You're doing a shitty job. Apparently, my job is to tell you, Saru, that you're doing a shitty job. Yeah, because they spend 15 minutes after the plot ended to do all this extra addendum stuff again that they right, do. We're, like, still, we're still trying to find the Kelpian ship, and book, book has, book has Emerald Chain, chain Tech. Technology, and and then Sir was like, read the field manual. I was like, I read it, and oh, I and it wasn't in there. Well, I read the tech manual too. It's like, okay, uh, I don't. I is is there anything like? To support book being uh, like a like so, like a genius like some kind of is, I mean I get he's just good at he just knows stuff because he's been around he just knows stuff right he's been on Which ships is, he's been a courier I'm fine with that's fine with me I'm, yeah. I'm just you know yeah I just I missed a couple of them just making sure I didn't miss anything that's, right I mean know. it's a give it it's a thing for like oh this is the guy that doesn't have to follow protocol we can use him like. Right, and then Saru's such a like an asshole about it. Like, no, you have to learn to follow protocol because I guess that's Saru's mo. But it's like, it's an established thing to do. You know, like you got Garrick, you got fucking Neelix and Voyager as the guy that knows shit that we don't know. It's like, and the, the, and then the, the book problem. comes up and says, "I can do that," and they're like, "No, we're not interested." It's like, okay. And then Tig showed. Was, yeah, Tig's back. No, go ahead. Tick shows up to say, like, why the fuck have you been stealing my good show that I'm in with your <laughs> power supply? <laughs> and yeah. yeah, and then he's and then just the fucking writing that like the overall writing that the the this show has. This was written by Bo Yun Kim. Well, this the teleplay was by Kalinda Vasquez, but it was written by Bo Yun Kim and Erica Lipholt, who are writing partners in Alan McElroy. So like how many fucking cooks did they have? I know. That's played this show the whole time. Yeah. Well, right, but even, I mean, yeah, over, overwrought, overwritten, over, like, everything. Who wrote the line when Tig finally shows up for Anthony Rent comes in, I haven't seen you since the dawn of time. It's like, yeah. just say something regular, right. you fucking asshole. Like, say some talk like a normal person. I know it's the future, but yeah. in the future, people don't talk like that dumb shit. Just like somebody thinking they're clever as a writer that by too clever by half and it, it and it rings very far. The episode was about time travel, Wade. Don't you get uh, it? Uh, no, it's dumb. No, it's bad. No, there's nothing to get. <laughs> yeah, it's just everybody is so over the top with everything. I liked your joke. It's not food. It's candy. It's funny. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, Tick yeah. was funny. He's like, yeah, it's like, Tick's yeah. Fu- I mean, Tick's you, funny. Tick can actually yeah, deliver the, a the, joke. The little gag, like, are you allowed to have that in here? Like, that was a nice little, yeah, little was. gag in there, yeah. I, I, I get the sense that Tig maybe, like, punches up her own dialogue or maybe improvises it or something. Like, I mean, maybe. I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, yeah. It's It just, it feels a little, it, it, it feels better than a lot of the dialogue you hear on the show. Right, right. Yeah. Oh, and then they, they throw in an extra thing. I guess it'll come up, and oh, and we got to talk about 
the Philip and Giorgio show because that's that's funny. Uh, like Three. she's like, oh, I had a chance one. His name was San. It's like, oh, yeah, oh you're telling the, us now. That's something I missed the first time I watched this episode. It was when she referenced that person. Is like, it, I don't remember her ever talking about this. They never did. It's like. A backdoor pilot, I guess he's gonna uh-huh. be a character right. that shows up. Yeah, yep. yeah. Which is funny because you know this whole thing is clearly they're just shooting her off to her own show, <laughs> which her own show is still in conversation. They've booked, right, it's not they've, they've yeah. greenlit these three other shows, and then like they back they back pocketed the yeah. section thirty one. So it, it's not even gonna happen probably because they're like we. We can only have three up to five Star Trek shows at one time, and and you know what? This is the first one we announced, but they're they're already like, oh, Kurtzman's like, oh yeah, that's in conversation still. We don't know we're doing that. Yeah, like just no, if nothing else, like Michelle Yeoh's schedule is has got to be an issue at some point because like she's very in demand and rightly so. Like I, with I what? What else she doing? Well, she's in one of the newer Marvel movies uh, as a different character. Uh, she's gonna be in Shang Chi. Um, she's, they're doing the Crazy Rich Asians sequel. I mean, I, she's, she's like... Yeah, so that's a like a two-month commitment. I'm not saying tops. any one of these things would preclude a TV show, but I just, I feel like she is doing a lot of movies, and that tends to, if you're, if you're super in demand for movies, that, that tends to preclude having a, a right. starring right. role in a TV show. I guarantee that is not what's held the Section 31 show. Oh, back. I'm not saying that's the problem. I'm just saying that's a new problem that they are going to encounter yeah. because well, I mean, it's taking so fucking long. Yeah, maybe. I mean, you know, Cole Meany got a writer in his contract for DS9 that he could go do movies whenever he wanted, and he did. Oh, yeah, y'all talk so, about I mean, that they can work a lot around. about him, like, going to do Con Air. Right. These shows, you know, they're only 13. They can work. They'll work around a schedule. Like, you know, Patrick Stewart can do this shit. That's know, true. That's fair, fair point, yeah. So, I mean, you know, I, I just, I, I, it's just one of those things, like, I'll believe it when I see it. Just like the, I guess, Strange New Worlds is actually happening, but, uh, the seven of nine show that's rumored. I don't even think that's been announced. That was that was nothing but a rumor. There's a rumored fucking uh, Avery Brooks Cisco show, which is also like that. I don't believe you can't trust these comics sites. news blah 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 websites. Right. They're not cosmic book news and all that shit. Yeah, it's like it's... there's so many of them that just seem to make up rumors whole cloth. Yeah, I love yeah. I love that James Gunn specifically will respond to these accounts. Because I, I just saw this today that there was like a, one of these sites like making uh, stuff up about uh, casting news for Adam Warlock in, in Guardians Three, and he was like, literally no part of the story makes sense. I'm not casting for the movie yet, and you know he like you're in these want... fucking Guardians movies, I'm Glenn. Sorry, what I'm... the fuck? It's on the Glenn, brain. Uh, how much? How much is are the Guardians of the Galaxy paying you, man? <laughs> Look, I just get a I get a commission per per stream on Disney Plus. <laughs> okay. Guys, I need this. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? When you put it like, why didn't you just say so, friend? I would have helped yeah, you. Yeah, well, well, happy to do it. The actual truth is they're fun space movies, and I wish. No, they are. It's I, different no, than I, Trek, but like, I do wish Discovery had a little yeah, bit more. It is different than Trek. You mean it's you better. mean you want your 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 space show to be fun? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. Uh, weird. Well, this is fun. They just quote, they have drinks and they just toast at the end. It's, it's a blast. Everybody loves each oh, other. It's the worst have, shit in the world. <laughs> everybody's having such fun in the cast here, though. They they play D&D together. Did you know that? No. Oh, yeah. In real life, yes, they do. Uh, I saw... Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. It's great. It. I mean, yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that I'm like... Hang out and be friends. I'm glad the cast loves each other, but that... I like, wish the that. writers loved the cast, because clearly oh, they, do. they don't. I think they... They love them too much. It's then the, oh, that's fair. Yeah. This just needed to be Giorgio quantum leaping through her life in the mirror universe at specific moments that turned her into the person she became and trying to fix it. Yes. It, it's hard to do Yes, that. we'll get I'll let you get to that. How would you fix it now? That's a perfect segue. Yeah. It's, so it's that, that's how I'd fix it. I think it, it needed to be quantum leap with the, the atrocities that she had committed, all the things in her title, the, you know, uh, laying waste to Andor and uh, Kronos and uh, Vulcan and everything, and the, the, a series of tests to see uh, how, like, she would, how, what, what she'd change. An alternate take, I might suggest, is if they really, really wanted to focus on the Michael thing, which I... I think we all agree was not the way to go. But let's just, for sake of argument, sure, say sure. that like it had to focus on Michael because we need 
the full cast in the episode because they've got their contracts and whatever. I think maybe a more effective version of what we had in these two, two episodes was something closer to like a Groundhog Day dynamic where like maybe you see Giorgio try multiple loops or try multiple times through multiple time loops to save Michael to change things and oh yeah see you just see her die o- and it's live die repeat over and exactly, over again right? yeah exactly a yeah. movie I didn't see but I, I think I get the concept that movie right. fucking oh, that, rules yeah that movie's great yeah, good thing yeah. shockingly so uh, but yeah I think that if they really wanted to focus on Michael I think that would have been a better way to do it where you just again you, you just see her try and try and try and try again and you know there's obviously uh, uh, there's a variety in that that I think would make this all more entertaining instead of this two hour or nearly two hour like rumination on oh the mirror universe is so bad it's right. all so bad I was gonna say yeah I'd love to watch uh, Michael die <laughs> over and over again but I said that and then I realized that I probably wouldn't because it would just be just so much screaming so many like <gasps> It would be very overwrought oh, over and over I, again. Over and, and it would be, and you know what? It would have been, I don't know if I would like to see that. <laughs> no, I, I definitely wouldn't either. But I think it's. But it, I think I, that's a great how wait approach to it, even though I might not have liked it. <laughs> well, I, I think, I think it, instead of just making it about saving Michael, again, like I think part of this has to be coming to terms with the fact that, like, oh, I was a genocidal dictator responsible for the death of possibly trillions. And. It, you know, they, they the the toast is the problem. The toast. I feel like every episode has a scene that's endemic of the problems, at the very least with the episode and usually the show itself. The toast at the end, completely endemic of the the problem with their approach to Georgia, which is they just told you she was you know uh, she was great and she was sassy and she was like, but they didn't like enough. It, that doesn't comport with the reality. Right. Like they. She was an asshole, but I loved her. <laughs> like, that's... Okay. <laughs> that's not the dynamic that we saw. The dynamic we saw is that she was an asshole, but also that she appeared in no way uh, 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 contrite for the many atrocities she had personally committed. And I just... It, 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 it's so forced. So much of it is forced. It's, it's, it's all just let something develop. Like, don't tell us it's developed. Let us see it develop. And, you know, it, it, when right. they reboot the show every fucking season and, you know, are so desperate for that viral thing that's going to, you know, get retweeted and get the shares on Instagram and, ah, Grudge the Cat has its own account and everything. It's just like, just just make yeah. something work first before you... Yeah. I think that goes back to my theory that there's just these so many producer mandates and yeah. showrunner redirections that like they just they can't let things develop because by the time they try to do that they get somebody telling them that no it has to be more like Star Trek that we people expect or no the Federation can't be bad you can't I know you're setting up all this stuff with the kind of morally uh, gray or Federation but that's not what people want from their Star Trek so uh, I nope. know halfway through we got to change course and make forget that scrap it scrap yeah. it scrap it it's it's a good it's a restaurant that has like good staff good ingredients like you know everything good on paper but every fucking week the management changes the cuisine it's like oh this week it's uh you know we're doing italian no 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 we're doing french no no we're doing this it's just they can't get a handle on it because they don't they've never defined <laughs> they need gordon ramsay to come in and just tell them to make mm-hmm. fucking hamburgers and that's right. it. <laughs> I mean, honestly, that's kind of like in Star Trek terms. That's actually what they need. They need yeah. uh, uh, probably. I, I know there's a, a lot of problematic showrunners from Star Trek's past, but just someone. I, I'm trying to think of like a, an analogy for like the. I don't want to say a J.J. Abrams type because like I, I like that first Kelvin movie and I like Beyond as well, but like they're action movies. They're not really Trekky. Like I've learned that since like starting all this is that. They are fun action movies with that. Sean, I think you even said this verbatim, like a, a Trek coat of paint on them. Yeah. And, like, they need someone from the world of Star Trek TV shows or someone familiar with the right. world of well, Star Trek TV. Well, Ronald D. Moore has no interest in going back to Star Trek. <laughs> I, I mean, Brian yeah. Fuller could have been that guy. Yeah, well, um, he he might have interest, but he is uh, not going to be allowed yeah. back either. 
I just but like they need yeah. someone like that. They need to bring someone in. It's not about oh, how can we make this you know a successful TV show. They right. need someone who's going to say I'm going to make this a successful Trek show specifically. Like mm, I think they just need somebody that's going to make a show. Yeah, I, I I yeah like I I you know I've gone on and on about how I don't care about if something Star Trek or not. And you know what? Because if they made something good, it's still Star Trek. It's just sure, different. but. You know, I think at this make point, yeah. at this point, like making it Trekkie would make it good. I don't think you can do that with this show because it's already gone off. The, you get it got it's got to be its own thing. And the, to do Trekkie, you do Strange New Worlds with a fucking Spock and Pike. Fine, I hate that because it's just the same old shit. But like, I want to see something different. I would love the if they did the fucking Death Stranding thing we thought they were gonna do and carried through God, on that, that well. I'd be in heaven right now. Yeah. You know, the, 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 can I can I segue into a status report or do you guys have other stuff? Well, to fix? Uh, yeah, Sean, do you have any? How would you fix this? Uh, well, oh, 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 I mean, I don't have to. You could just go in a status report and no, uh, I'll go fuck myself that. if you want. No, That's, no, uh, no I, I don't want that. No, you don't want me to just go fuck myself. No, no. I mean, not, I mean, unless you want to fuck yourself, in which case I say, you know, you do you. Uh, Listen, I do want to <laughs> fuck myself, and I will later. All right, don't you worry. Okay, that's covered. <sighs> All right. Well, I regret even asking. Yeah, I, I, I was going to say. Exactly. <laughs> no, how I how I'd how I'd fix it very quickly. Uh, I would have, I would have had in Terra Firma Part One. I would have had them both uh, go back in time, hop over to the to the mirror universe back in the like, basically the same spot, uh, except like when they get there. I don't know, they, like, squish Mirror Michael or something, and then Prime Michael has to pretend to be Mirror Michael, and oh. then they're just, like, they get to go on, like, some, some like, wacky, uh, you know, like, uh, Michael shenanigans. I kind of like the idea of, like, Michael accompanying her on, you know, this quest to change things, and, like, but, you know, yeah. I, I could see that. I, I on See, I, right, I guess I'm losing the whole quest to change things. I'm having, they end up back there. They're not, like, really sure how, but then they're like, oh, great. Giorgio can just, like, get back to, like, the Prime Universe in this time, and Michael can go back to, and so that's the goal. That's sort of, like, the goal is finding the ways to do that, and then they do, and everything, and uh, Giorgio's like, ah, uh, you, you know, sometimes you do get a second chance. And then she, yeah. you know, and yeah, and yeah. then she goes. That, that, and I, that, I think that's she does, and yeah, that that could have worked. I, I think there's there's a way that could have worked. It would have been interesting seeing Prime Michael uh, in this particular, you know, sequence of the Mirror Universe. I guess we've already seen her in the right. Mirror Universe from my, season one. My my whole thing with if you're gonna try to do the everything I wanted from from Philippa Giorgio was like I hate Mirror Universe shit like. One, either make Michael burn a mirror, like make her able to be changed or just make it clear like, oh, she's irredeemable and have her realize, no, my daughter sucks. Yeah. And, and that's how, how can I make things better? Day thing could have like, right. No, I liked your, I liked, I liked all, all your ideas were great, Glenn. I, all of that shit yeah. would work and what I wanted. Uh, the other thing, just, it just, if you're going to just go whole back to the beginning of how do you fix mere evil emperor space hitler like she's she's out of phase with her universe so she's fucking up like have the guardian do a thing where they combine the prime and mirror giorgio into a new person like Ooh. like yeah. fucking uh dark crystal this shit with the skexies and right the, the, right the turn them back into the earth skex uh. right yeah like you know like oh well we can't fix you but we can combine a little right. bit to get you in phase, and it's a whole new thing. We need a fucking guardian, uh, space god to do it, and that's why they had have have the fucking sphere data say, "Oh, I found the space god that can change fucking <sighs> universes, smash it together somehow." That's and that's how that would be, because then also you can bring, like, the killing Prime Giorgio and. Episode one was lame because it was that a red character. Herring. Yeah, well, that character had so much room to be a more complicated character than "haha, I'm a space Hitler and I'm evil." But don't you like? And then they tried to do things like she's a nice space Hitler now, but like, no, it sucks. Like, have a interesting, good Star Trek captain. It's more interesting 
by far than an evil space sailor to me. So do the good and bad and push it together. That's how I would have done it. One last riff on that. Show us the life of Mirror Giorgio and the life of Prime Giorgio and lead up into that. I like that. I, I think that's an interesting, like, sci-fi, like, a little bit of a heady concept, but that it's not, like, too out there. Like, I... I right. Have her, like, qu- the first, first episode of the two-parter, you have her fucking quantum leap into prime Giorgio and then second episode is them melding together coming to an agreement and then she's not dying at the end of it even just having her experience prime Giorgio's life not even necessarily having them like combine into a new person just having her see what nah you you know like that (laughs) No, well, because then, because then she's still a space Hitler. Like, well, she's still a space Hitler. She make her a totally new creation at the end of it. Not like I learned something. I don't know. Like two vix or shit. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm I'm a couple. Well, here, uh, segue. <laughs> Status reports. Um, so uh, I, I'm a couple episodes away from uh, two vix, uh, but I have now seen Threshold. Ah, uh. I have. Those those lizards have done the nasty. I, you know, it's... I understand why that episode is controversial. It is just a bizarre story to begin with. Okay. No, I just want... The only question I want to know, uh, better or worse than Star Trek Discovery? Oof. I mean, honestly, my gut says better because it, at least it's a swing. At least it's a big sci-fi it's, swing that, like going past the warp threshold like makes you i didn't like that they said oh this is like he evolved into the future uh this must be where humanity is going to go it's like that's not how evolution fucking works it's a response to environmental pressures but whatever yeah sometimes you get so bad like we had this on the roa with the hopscotch children story when in season one like oh yeah the, the gangsters uh, not, not yeah a la moraine a la moraine uh you know like sometimes when it's so bad it's it's, it's still awful but it's, it's enjoyable yeah it rounds out back around to fun to watch and like i don't know like maybe i don't know i haven't watched threshold in a long time so i can't it's, say I, like there's nothing in threshold like and mass that like makes it a bad episode necessarily. Like again, it's a swing. It's like it's you know okay. The, the they they're test they're they're exploring the top speed in the Trek galaxy. Great, you know, nice nice bit of like you know canon there, and uh, you know it, it, like you see Tom uh, deteriorate and yada yada yada. The thing is just the weird the weirdness of the fact that they made them have these little lizard babies, and then when they're <laughs> they establish that it was very easy to reverse what had happened to them which th- th- one there's just a lot of ethical questions not just from the fact that like Paris and Janeway you know had sex and they completely brushed off like Janeway makes a joke that's like oh well the female of the species uh, often initiates uh, uh, contact uh, but apology accepted but it's just like again th- th- a lot of ethical implications where they, they leave the lizard babies on the planet where it's just like I don't know, like, should they have tried? To, would they have turned back into humans if they did the same thing to them? Or what? It's, it's, it's again, it's they a They were big never swing. human to start, though. So that Right, be, well, but that would be like killing Tuva, Tuvix. Uh, oh, <laughs> very excited. Yeah, yeah. I've heard so much about Tuvix, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see. I don't know what Tuvix looks like. I, I, I've only heard that Tuvix looks very strange. Um, well, he, he looks like Tuvok and Neelix. I, I mean, if you, if you smushed them together. If, if they did what they sh- if they did what they should have done to mirror Giorgio and right. Ryan Giorgio, <laughs> she would look the same because the same person. But right. if if one was a dumb uh, makeup alien and the other one was a uh, was a guy with pointy ears, maybe. Right. They, yeah. Which actually, that, that's another uh, episode I, I I thought was interesting was. Um, uh, the one with uh, what's his name, Brad Dwarf, who appropriately enough played Worm Tongue on uh, in Lord yeah. of the Rings. Um, great. Oh, he's character. a serial killer in that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's the the. Yeah, the, yeah. the um, I can't. What's what is? Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. We can wrap up this segment. Betazoid. Betazoid. I forgot the name of the. Oh uh, right, right, right. Um, he's ba- yeah, Betazoid serial killer. But that was interesting, like seeing um, a couple of Betazoids on this podcast. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, but yeah, so my it's, my, 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 it's true. <laughs> yeah, no, it's absolutely true. Um, my main thing I, I realized watching Voyager this week is that 
you know, what I talked about when I complained about Discovery and like, oh, it should have kind of like a goal, but like still tell these sci-fi stories. I realized that Voyager kind of does, at least early on in the episodes I'm seeing, does like an okay job of like keeping a larger arc going while still, you know, doing the Star Trek thing of like, ah, here's a, you know, a, a sci-fi story that goes kind of out there. Because uh, not only do they have the, the general thing of like trying to get back to uh, to Federation space, but also they have this thing where they have the Cardassian spy who defected to the Kazon and uh, yeah, that all that all done. That. I'm sure. I'm sure. I, I I can't speak for how it'll turn out. I'm sure I won't like it. But like you know, I appreciate that they're they're keeping a plot iron in the fire without it having overwhelmed the show in mass. Like you still have this the the Star Trek oh, yeah, stories yeah. While, while keeping the overall plot moving towards something. And and I think Discovery, of all the shows that Discovery could learn from, I think Voyager might be the, the most relevant to it. It pains me to, to sideline Deep Space Nine because it does such a no, good that's job. that's fine. Cause, well, they, like, they should, too, because, well, like, Kirsten Beyer is, like, one of the main writers on the show now. She she is a Voyager writer. She oh, didn't okay. write it. The sh- she didn't write the show, but she's... Her claim oh, right. was you, writing you, wrote the all novel, the best right. Voyager novels. Right. You know, and, and yeah, so it's like that. that's the kind of thing where it's like, that, that, that's the template that they could, you know, crib from where it's like, yeah, there, there's, of course, there's an overall plot because it's prestige TV, but like, it's it's like Cones of Dunshare. At the end of the day, it's about the Cones. It's Star Trek. At the end of the day, it's about the Trek oh, stories. Boy. It's, okay. It's, right. Oh, boy. All oh right, boy. fuck you. Status report's over. <laughs> that was a great status report. One of my yeah, favorites. Yeah, oh yeah. Uh, like, sorry, <laughs> you motherfucker. Keep, well, you know what? For the final segment, how about you just yell obscenities at Sean and we'll just go out on that. Sean, if you think I'm going to promote your fucking podcast, Folsom <laughs> Prison Tunes, about the shittiest genre of music known to humankind, you got another fucking thing coming. Folsom Prison Tunes, available wherever podcasts are downloaded. You think I'm going to promote that for one fucking second on this podcast on Aww. iTunes now? Eat shit. Aww. It's a good podcast. Okay. I enjoyed it. Hey, uh, thanks. Yeah, that's yeah, sure. Shut the fuck up, Sean. You have to go to work in the morning. Yeah. yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just scared of, of assertive Glenn over there. No, I love it.